Welcome into the Inside Carolina podcast presented to you by Johnny T-Shirt and JohnnyT-Shirt.com. This is a special edition of the Inside Carolina podcast. We're breaking down the 2020-21 UNC basketball schedule that was released on Tuesday morning. I'm your host, Ross Martin, and I'm joined by Greg Barnes. We worked on the whole schedule this morning, got it out. Greg has a, a great analysis article also Inside Carolina, so we're just going to chop it up for 15, 20 minutes and break down what the Tar Heels, um, who they'll be playing and, and what that schedule kind of looks like. Greg, taking a look at the schedule, what stood out to you immediately? Um, it jumped off the, the screen there. Uh, oddly enough, what, what jumped out to me is the fact that North Carolina has one home game in December and they have two home games before January, uh, which kind of just speaks to COVID-19 and how it's impacted everything. But um, you know, UNC had to eliminate four games, and some of those games were UNCW, uh, but also road trips to Hawaii and uh, Monmouth. Uh, and so those are games, and typically the home games are, are games against uh, maybe lesser opponents, if you will, that you can really allow the team to gel and have some success and get the young guys time. Uh, those games really don't exist on this schedule, this 27-game schedule now. You've got a few pockets there where you can take advantage. But these guys are going to have to learn on the fly. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty tough non-conference schedule. I mean, to kind of step back a bit, uh, the season opens on November 25th. That's the day before Thanksgiving, if I'm correct? Yep. Uh, against College of Charleston. And then immediately that next uh, after that weekend, they, they head to Asheville for the Maui Invitational um, to play UNLV on Monday, November 30th. They have three games in Asheville. And they could play Alabama and Stanford, Alabama or Stanford in the second game, and then have a variety of opponents they could play, depending on what happens in those first two games. Um, the non conference continues on December 8th against number five, Iowa, at Iowa in the ACC uh, Big Ten Challenge. They're back at home against Elon um, and travel to Ohio State for the CBS Sports Classic, uh, travel to Cleveland to play Ohio State. And then the ACC season starts on December 22nd at NC State in Raleigh's PNC arena. Uh, looking at that non-conference slate, Greg, obviously, I mean, Iowa's gonna be a tough matchup. Ohio State won't be easy. Um, they could get some, definitely get some tests at the Maui Invitational. W what jumped off the page to you? Yeah, well, Iowa, right? I mean, you got Luca Garza, that's probably the best player in the country. Uh, just a horse of a man inside, very talented. But we talk about, you know, North Carolina's front court, you know, trying to make a statement that it's the, the deepest and most talented group in the country, uh, they're going to get to prove it because having to go to Iowa and, and gear up against Garza is going to be a, a tough challenge. And that, that'll be fun to watch to see, especially the young guys, how Daron Sharp and uh, Walker Kessler handle that, that moment. Uh, that's a tough, tough ask. Uh, and then you look at the Maui field and I think people will say, eh, there's no like heavyweights. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, Texas is the only other top 25 ranked team. I think they're ranked 19th. But you look, I mean, Alabama, Stanford, Indiana, these are all teams that were receiving votes in the top 25 poll. So while they may not be top 25, they're right there on the edge. So th these are good teams. And I think that's what Carolina needs. They need games that they should win, mm -hmm. but games that are a challenge. And I think finding that middle ground is, is difficult. Uh, but I do think, uh, you know, the first four games especially kind of set North Carolina up for the potential to, to go into Iowa for – uh, what should be at that point in time, probably a top 10 matchup, uh, but that'll be a really good test. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Usually they have a couple more games to kind of get geared up for that. The, the big games in December, uh, less games this year, less time. But I think after the Maui Invitational, we'll have a certain idea if this team is really good or, or maybe still needs a lot of work. Um, they do play, like you said, you know, Alabama, Stanford, Davidson, Indiana, Providence, Texas, all three of those teams. So, um, yeah, and then Iowa. I mean, and I think when I saw that game on the schedule a couple of weeks back, you know, I felt good that UNC definitely has the bodies, you know, to, to guard Luke Garza. Um, they're on sharp, like you said, uh, and um, Walker Kessler and, and Garrison Brooks and Amani Bay Cobb. I mean, they have the, the guys to go against them. So that will be an awesome, awesome matchup and definitely like a primetime must, must watch game here. Um, okay, so then Elon and then Ohio State. Okay, so let's get into the ACC slate here. Um, you know, the AP rankings were released. 
UNC faces Virginia, Duke, um, a good Miami team. And there's, there's tons of good games, and you just, it doesn't seem like there's much of a break. When you kind of went through the schedule and wrote your article, where did you see – how did you kind of break the, uh, the schedule, the ACC schedule up in terms of where it could be really difficult for UNC and where maybe they could have a little break in, in, the, in the challenges they face? Well, I think – First and foremost, uh, the fact that they're playing state in December yeah. is is neat, and I, I I think they last opened the ACC schedule in state in '06, but they haven't played in you know before January since '79 in, in the Big Four tournament, um, which is kind of wild. So that's that's a fun way to kind of start things off. Uh, but the fact that while you don't have uh, maybe you know, the elite teams early. Although Florida State at Florida State January 16th is tough. Four of the first six games are on the road. Um, and so that is a challenge. I mean, at State's always a tough place to play. Uh, they always seem to have a hard time in Georgia Tech, and they've got good guards back this year. Uh, they should be much improved. Um, Syracuse to Syracuse at Miami. You know, you got another really good guard, and Chris Likes can't believe he's back. Yeah. Uh, and then he's a really Clemson. short guy, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you've got uh, your Clemson who Sims is back, the guy that hit the, the big shot last year. Uh, so, and then Florida State. So those first six games, there's a lot of uh, games that Carolina will probably be favored in, but those will be tough, tough situations for, for UNC to play, especially with some of the young guys, to kind of get the, the ACC schedule started. Yeah, another thing to note is that UNC students will be off campus, uh, you know, starting at Thanksgiving. And so, you know, and they don't come back until mid-January. So they have this whole December and, and a lot of January where it's going to be just basketball. I mean, there won't be exams. There won't be um, – school won't start back until mid-January. So there's a there's a stretch there of ACC games where it will be just basketball for UNC. They won't, they'll be the only people on campus. It looks like probably six ACC games before classes even start back. Or maybe around that January 16th matchup at Florida State. And I think that's a that's a big talking point too, Ross, because typically what happens, you, you have the ACC Big Ten Challenge game like the first week of December, and then you have a couple other non-conference games, and people think, oh, yeah, well, they've got all this open time. They can practice a lot. They don't typically because what they have is exam week. You have like 10 days of exams, yeah. and Roy Williams is adamant about that, that, hey, we're going to give the guys time off to study. With exams being before Thanksgiving this year, I mean, he's going to have them for like a whole month where yeah. it's going to be nothing but basketball, and that will be a benefit for, for how this schedule sets up. Yeah, because honestly, um, Thanksgiving is November 26th, so um, they'll have exams leading up to that matchup with College of Charleston on the 25th, but after that, it's all basketball. That's, that's a great point there, that they're going to get their exams done and all the, the reading days and that week of kind of preparation for exams before really the, the season starts, which is uh, an interesting change. And, and obviously because of, of the different schedule and the global pandemic we are in. Okay. So we kind of took us to the Florida state game at Florida state, uh, four road games in the first six games. I think it's a little easier. Uh, of course, we don't know how good these teams are. Who knows? It could be a breakout team. Uh, we got a lot of new, co a couple of new coaches in the league, um, some transfers. So we don't know how good these teams are going to be. They play wake forest. They play wake forest at home, state at home at Pitt home against Notre Dame, um, at Clemson, and then the first Duke matchup is on February 6th. Anything stand out from those matchups? It looks a little bit easier until you until you maybe get at Clemson, at Duke. Yeah, I think so. I think some of those games, you know, we'll have to see exactly what Wake is with the new coach. Mm -hmm. um, getting he's stayed got, at he's home. got a lot of rebuilding to do there. Yeah, he does, for sure. Uh, that you know, they, they waited too long to pull the trigger on, on Danny Manning, for sure. Uh, <laughs> State, you know, at Pitt, I think Pitt's going to be better. They still got, you know, their guards. Xavier Johnson's really good. Uh, Notre Dame's a little bit of a rebuild mode. So those are our games that you would think that Carolina, not that they have a breather, you never have a breather in ACC play, but that is a stretch where they can kind of say, okay, let, let's see where we are after this first stretch of all these road games, get settled in. But as you say, once you get to that Clemson game down in Death Valley, mm -hmm. uh, that is a very difficult stretch of games at Clemson, at Duke, Miami, and then at Virginia, and those, those are some some tough tests. Yeah, it's definitely the, the toughest stretch there, I think, when you go at Duke and then a couple of days later have Miami and then at Virginia. Um, I guess I just didn't realize when I did my ACC rankings yesterday, I didn't realize how good Virginia is going to be. Tons of returning players and, and definitely that grad transfer. Who? What's his name again? Sam Hauser. 
Sam Hauser is the great From Marquette. Name. Wojo. Wojo prospect. Yep. Mm-hmm. Apparently him and his brother, Sam Hauser, had a falling out with Wojo. Oh. Um, is what happened with, I think both of them ended up transferring at some point during their career. Um, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so I was going to say something about those teams, but I forgot it. Um, okay, so that takes us to, you know, mid-February. Uh, it gets, you know, at home against Virginia Tech, at home against Louisville, uh, at Boston College, at home against Florida State, at Syracuse, and then home against Duke. Both Duke games are on a Saturday. Uh, Pat James, who used to write for GoHeels.com, has done some long-form stuff for us. Uh, he, he posted that stat on Twitter. So that's unusual that both Duke games are on Saturday nights. I would assume that's different. Um, anything from that slate, the, the Virginia, Virginia Tech, Louisville, Boston College, Florida State, Syracuse, anything stand out there for you? Not really. I'm curious to see how Louisville's going to be. They've got the the grad transfer from Radford, who they they think is going to be a really good guard for them. Maybe one of the best guards they've had in a number of years. Uh, I think David Johnston is is poised for a breakout season. Uh, they also have uh, Malik Williams back, so the pieces are there for Chris Mack for that team to turn around. And with that game being so late in the season, that could be a tough challenge. I mean, Mack always has his teams play hard, and that tends to be problematic for for how UNC likes to play. So that'll be a good one. Um, you know, Jim Christian, we'll have to see if he's lame duck at that point in time. He needs to have a good year at BC. But then you get you know, Florida State, again, is going to be a good team. At Syracuse late in the year, you know, Jimmy Beheim, uh, while he, you know, he hasn't had the talented teams that we've seen in the past, he's a good coach. And so that, that'll be a tough test, as always, at the Carrier Dome. And then, of course, Duke. So it's not the – we've seen several years here of late where it's really been a murderer's row late in the year for UNC. This is not that year. Mm-hmm. But there are enough good games here. I think the fact that you go from at Virginia to Virginia Tech, I think Virginia Tech will, will not be as good this year. Then you have Louisville, then you get BC, right? Then Florida State, and then Syracuse, which shouldn't be as good. So you've got some really good games and then maybe some games against lesser opponents. And I, I think that should help things out. Yeah, I mean, I think Louisville, that's, a, that's definitely a team to watch, not just this season moving forward. I think Chris Max is a really good coach. I mean, that, the video of him challenging – uh, Coach Cal to a matchup was hilarious. I mean, I think he's the right guy for that job. So they're definitely a team. I mean, Louisville's always been a, a tough contest, but I'm interested to see how he kind of gets that thing rolling because they they can recruit there with what they do and, and kind of the uh, maybe more lenient academic restrictions. And they sell there. beer, of course not. I mean, that's right. Um, okay, so um, Greg, I mean, stepping back, you know, this team – we don't know much about. I mean, so you have a you have six freshmen, uh, many of which are going to play big roles. You have Garrison Brooks coming back. You have Leaky Black coming back. You have Amanda Baycott um, coming back. I mean, as you sit here on November tenth, fifteen days from the the tip off, what's your perspective on this team and how they can kind of handle the schedule and, and how the season could go? We don't know a lot, and we you know like last year we thought they're going to be pretty good and they end up being one of the worst teams in UNC history. So what's your kind of big picture takeaway with, with this team and the schedule? Yeah, I, I guess what 2010 and 2020 have taught us, right. Is that uh, you always have to factor in injuries and yeah, say, I mean, well, injuries aren't, aren't going to happen. Uh, they should be really good. I, the interesting thing for me, and this, this is selfish and I, I don't think I'm alone on, in this Ross. Uh, but as, as media covering some of the preseason games or early season games in college basketball, you cover a lot of bad games just because you Carolina is as good as it typically is. And you play some, some, some poor opponents. And so you get some lopsided 40 point games. That's not really going to happen this year, you know, with the NCAA uh, pushing the, the schedule back 15 days without, you know, adjusting the back end, it's much more condensed uh, and talent wise it's much denser. And so, I don't think you're going to have. I mean, maybe Elon will be a will be a blowout. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how College of Charleston is going to be this year. But that's probably about it. Uh, so the negative there for UNC because they're having to rely on that freshman class is they don't get as many opportunities to make mistakes without it being a big deal. Uh, that's going to be tough. And so I, I really think the challenge for Roy Williams this year is because you have so many big games early. Uh, there's not a break. And what that means is I don't think it'll be an issue physically. I think emotionally it's going to wear on these kids, especially the young guys, as you get into January and February because they've been going hardcore since day one. 
and they don't get that Christmas break they typically would because you've got Ohio State on the 19th, NC State on the 22nd, and then you're at Georgia Tech a week later. So there's not a big break there. Uh, and so I really think the emotional toll is going to be more significant than the physical. And I, I think that's the biggest issue probably the team's going to face. But I, I think the schedule is strong. I, I think it's, it's going to be a, a good test. We're going to get to see how good this team is early. Um, and it really will set them up for a late season run. Yeah, they don't have that that whole kind of exam break like we usually have. They don't have the, the a bigger holiday break. Um, so they they didn't. I didn't. Even, I didn't even think about that. They just condensed it, and there's there's not on the back, and there's there's not an extended part in the back, and everything starts on time in terms of the ACC tournament, NCAA tournament. You mentioned your article. They have um, a couple Saturday Mondays, which which Roy Williams hates the one day turnaround plus some travel. I think for at least one of those uh, two games, they do have a couple longer gaps um, i've seen Jan- january 9th first clemson and then seven days later at florida state so there's a couple of those but yeah there's there's definitely some tight games in there so i'll test uh unc mentally and with with freshmen you never know so, and, and with injuries you never know either i mean one injury here or there to some key players and and the season can derail quickly as we have learned uh, i think that's about it i mean definitely want to shout out johnny t-shirt make sure if, as you shop for the holidays you uh, head over to giantt-shirt.com and Johnny T-shirt on Franklin Street and use the 10% off discount code that all Inside Carolina subscribers can get. Um, great website, great options for anything you need for family and friends, uh, sweatshirts, shirts, you know, trinkets, stuff for, for small gifts or big gifts, and a place to get all your, um, your holiday gifts for family. It's one-stop shop. And with a 10% off discount code, you can definitely get a lot of things uh, discounted there. So Johnny T-shirt and giantt-shirt.com. That's about it for, for Greg and I. I mean, one thing I want to mention is like, we don't know what media is going to be like, Greg. I mean, I don't know if you're going to be covering all the games, if we're going to have two seats, if we're going to have a video seat, if we're going to have a photographer there. Uh, we haven't been told about that. So we're waiting to hear how that happens. Um, I mean, have you heard anything in terms of travel? I mean, I'm assuming you'll get to go to the away games, right? The hope is yeah. uh, I, the challenge, you know, Duke, for example, has already announced new fans. Uh, and so one I imagine of these- we'll get one, just get one seat for that. Right. And well, that's the thing is you, the initial conversation with Duke uh, was you can't have fans because the place is so small. Right. Mm-hmm. But then what do you do with media? Because you can't have media sitting on the sidelines. That's, that yeah. kind of goes against what they're trying to do. So do you put media back where the crazies were? Uh, so a lot of those logistical issues have to play out. And, and people are like, well, you've had months to figure this out. You got to understand they didn't know if football was going to happen. And so the entire focus for the longest time was just on football. Mm-hmm. And so only in the last couple of weeks have they really started kind of trying to pinpoint how basketball is going to be handled. And then, I mean, look at it. It's November 10th. We just got the basketball schedule. The yeah. season starts in 15 days. <laughs> so they're, they're playing catch up at this point in time. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's great. I mean, look, Cameron Indoor, no fans. I mean, that's a huge change. I mean, that's a very – it's a lot easier – I mean, that like might be a game, right? Exactly. That might be three or five, you know, three to five points right there off the spread. Sure. With, with that, especially for a rookie laden team or, you know, a random team coming in. I mean, that makes the game a lot easier for the opponent coming in to Cameron Indoor. And same for places like, you know, Virginia Tech always seems like it's kind of loud. Um, Virginia, uh, places like that. Uh, and I think at, at UNC, um, the, the fans, you know, wine cheese, older people, Rams club people up front, not as rowdy, maybe not as much of a factor, but uh, certainly something to, to pay attention to as we navigate a season during the uh, COVID-19 era we are currently in. Uh, for Greg Barnes, I'm Ross Martin. Thanks for listening to the Inside Carolina podcast. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe. Check out Giant T-shirt, and we will uh, check you next time. Appreciate it, guys.